anyone could copy it. But over the years, people kept inventing newer and better copying machines, each disrupting the business model that had come before. From the player piano to the radio to the VCR, each technology originally copied ideas without paying the copyright holder. The solution was always a balance. Lawmakers ensured the right of the new technology to innovate while maintaining the right of authors to still get paid. By 1998, the music industry was raking in over $13 billion a year. And that's when an 18-year-old college dropout invented Napster, a program that transformed the world's computers into a peer-to-peer -peer music sharing network. The record industry realized that in this future, they would lose control. So when Napster offered to pay a billion dollars in exchange for a license to allow their users to keep copying, the record industry refused to evolve, parted with history, and started suing. Hi, I'm one of the kids who was prosecuted for downloading music free off the internet. What is it about? This? In essence, it's about control. It's really about controlling what you own. To own and, and control his control, own art. Yes, is controlling that. Time out for one second. Part of what we're trying to do here is make people understand that what they're doing is illegal. That means come clean, delete your files, and promise to never, ever do it again. But Napster was a peer-to-peer -peer technology, the opposite of broadcast. It allowed people to share files directly between individuals. You didn't need a central signal. You just needed a connection and a friend. And there were a lot more of us than there were of them. When Napster was shut down, it was like we were cockroaches. They turned the lights on. We all streamed under the furniture. And um, we had missed the fact that in 18 months, We'd assembled the largest library of human creativity ever, and we'd done it for free. When the course shut Napster down, there were, I think, 52 million Napster users, and 50 million had voted for each political candidate in the presidential election. So there were enough Napster users to change, you know, the outcome of an election. Napster had captured the world's attention because it was simple, effective, and deliciously fun. Everyone started sharing all their music, and before you knew it, we had built up the greatest library of music in history. But it also meant we didn't need the record labels anymore, because now we were all distributors. For the longest period of time, the industry had controlled technology, and therefore the people were subservient to that technology. This is like the power goes back to the people. Right, and but, it's definitely been two different but worlds. But there's millions of dollars involved in this. If the record company bosses don't take the money, then the internet people are going to take. Somebody's going to profit off this, and if it's not the artist, then you're profiting illegal. It's bulletproof. I mean, it's, right, are it's you, simple. It's bulletproof, meaning what? That if you're going to do this, you're going to have to, people like Metallica with very deep pockets who are very tenacious on your back all the time, and whether that's something that you want to continue pursuing, basically. <laughs> Welcome to point two. The established powers of the past will always try to control the future. We received a notice from the attorney that there's been illegal activity on our computer. She was representing, of course, the recording industry. She said, you're, you're guilty, uh, Mr. Smith, of, of downloading songs illegally on your computer and I said to the woman I said I've never downloaded songs and she said well someone in your household must have and I said perhaps I said you have to understand my computer is our family computer and on any given Friday or Saturday night my uh, child would have uh, maybe dozens of friends over and and at that point she said uh, well we will send you a form and you can implicate your child I'm Don Smith. Uh, I'm a pastor and a ministry consultant from McKinney, Texas in the Dallas, Texas area, and I have been sued for copyright infringement. No this world in which we pretend that we're not all copyright criminals is like the Victorians who pretended that they didn't all masturbate. Right? The official line was, if you masturbate, you get hair on your palm, you go blind, you go nuts. Right? The official line today is that only bad people copy files without authorization. In both cases, it's not true. 
And I think that what's happening with copyright is the same thing th that happened with masturbation, that people are starting to admit to each other, yeah, I do it too. But at the same time the law made 52 million people copyright criminals, one lawyer was launching a movement to set them all free. His name is Lawrence Lessig. He's the guy who wrote the manifesto that inspired this film. The one thing that's absolutely clear is that there's no way to kill this technology. We can only criminalize its use. We can't stop people from taking culture and remaking it in a way that expresses their ideas differently. We can only drive this creativity underground. We can't make our kids passive in the way we were growing up. We can only make them, quote, pirates. And the question we've got to ask is whether this is any good. Lessig has been traveling the globe for over a decade, sounding the alarm on his own country's copyright policy. You know, I'm, I'm not anti-American, so I'm not trying to rally people against America, but I am anti this particular version of American policy. I'm embarrassed by it because it is so extreme relative to our tradition, and it does harm when it forces, when this kind of extremism is forced on developing nations. And I think it's particularly appropriate then to come to developing nations and to at least get them to recognize that there's another side to this story. So I felt like a lawyer with a guilty conscience that you know somehow there had to be a balance to this and if a mess was being created because lawyers were playing into the hands of these you know, people who profited from this, then lawyers needed to be on the other side. So that's what really got me going. I want to make a mashup film basically. I want to take all my, my favorite mashups, my favorite movies on these subjects, stuff I find on the internet, and I want to cut this together in a way that really tells the story of the last 10 years of copyright. I'm wondering if maybe you could take a look at it. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's totally illegal. <laughs> they take my house? <laughs> Do you have a house? No. <laughs> well, then don't worry. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're good. This is the kind of advice I was looking for. But isn't there some fair use in here? Yeah. Or is it all fair use? Well, in my view of what fair use ought to be, everything that you've shown me should be fair use. Fair use is a part of copyright law that allows for free speech. I can use small amounts of copyrighted material to make an argument. I can still get sued, but now I have a defense. Uh, I think that the way you should think about it is, imagine you were writing an essay, and in the course of the essay you would quote stuff from your culture, right? You'd quote passages from, you know, some popular writer, uh, or you'd have pa passages from Shakespeare, whatever. You just include it. And you'd use it to try to make your story, right? And what you do is you'd quote and you'd cite. That's what you do. Um, you should have the same freedom with film as that writer has with that text. Nobody would doubt that the writer could do that with the text, but it's a, it's a, it's a federal case whether you're allowed to do that with film. The coolest lawyer in the world just told me I'm making an illegal film. If I want to use this girl talk song, I would need to ask dozens of rock stars and get permission from the Warner Brothers. But there's no amount of money in the world that would convince the music industry to allow me to use their own music to criticize them. If it were up to them, you wouldn't be allowed to hear anything. Generate silence. <laughs>